Hey, Peter Heim. Hi, my name's Peter Heim. I'm the Vice President for EMEA for Red Owl. Um, a couple of observations here. Um, one, I'm probably the oldest guy in the room. Um, well, possibly. Um, and the second is I'm probably the least technical guy in the room. And I can apologize for the second. I can't really do much about the first. Um, uh, much like Chris, we were at the PwC Cybersecurity Today yesterday presenting uh, new technology companies um, uh, doing different, interesting, we think, things um, in in the space. So I'm going to talk a little bit about you know predictive risk and security analytics and what Red Owl do, particularly around the insider threat and the people within a business. Um, talk a little bit about the challenges, just to set the scene, uh, who we are, what we do, how we approach the issue, a particular case study quickly, uh, and some of the differentiators with Red Owl. So what's the problem? Um, well, 60% of all the attacks come from the insider. And the vast majority of you would be very aware of the technology investments that organizations make to protect the perimeter. Um, when 60% of the problem is outside that, that, that sphere, it changes the dynamic. And you know, old guy that I am, I've been in the cybersecurity business nearly 20 years. And I have yet to see any organizations outside of our customer base proactively monitoring for inappropriate behavior by the employees within the business in a real way, and, and that will become clear. Um, I think you're all very aware of this. You know, the last one in the UK, or the most recent one, the Sage employee where uh, a lady was arrested at Heathrow, uh, Mossack Fonseca, uh, the Booza Alan Hamilton uh, consultant who's just been arrested in the US working for the NSA. Um, and the challenge is, is all, all of the organizations that you work with, work for, have got data. Um, they just haven't had the ability to actually transform that data into a narrative or in a story and surface the people of concern. But whether that's a, you know, a saboteur, somebody who's disgruntled, about to leave the business, we found people being blackmailed for intellectual property. Obviously, you've got the, the Snowden-type internal activist who wants to go out and publish uh, information because they believe, for whatever reason, that uh, it's in the public interest. Um, and there's negligent, you know, there's three types of user, the malicious, um, the compromised, and the negligent, really. So we look at taking a, a, a unique risk where you look at the behaviors of the individuals within the organization, not just the anomalies. Um, and it is very much a human-centric approach. Uh, the use cases for us are regulatory surveillance. You've probably all heard of FX, LIBOR, market manipulation, the massive fines that the financial services have been charged with. Um, they need to proactively monitor what those traders are doing. Unfortunately, the behavior hasn't necessarily changed, and they need to join up disparate data sets of voice, email, chat, trade, um, digital, um, to work out who are the people of concern. Information security, we're going to talk more about that, but that is about intellectual property theft, compromised or negligent users, um, and providing risk to the business. And the more generic one is more about um, conduct and behavior in the business. And we have HR teams talking to us about you know, people who are you know, bullying, sexism, racism, harassment, inappropriate behavior generally, um, that we're able to float for them as well. A um, little bit about Red Owl, um, it really comes from Guy, our CEO, who is in the US military, uh, built their big data analytics platform in the mid-2000s in Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, subsequently set up a company to run that for the US government, um, sold that, and in 2012 formed Red Owl to build a commercial version of the platform to surface people of interest, people of concern, and the humans within the business number of you know high profile investors we've got there as well talked a little bit about this earlier the perimeter isn't enough everybody's made investments in it it's easy customers buy boxes with blinky flashy lights on to solve problems don't manage them don't monitor them don't get the results um, it's important but on its own it's not enough and the data without the context any tools you'll see for behavior based analytics today are still just looking at metadata and log data from network, um, endpoints, um, identity and access management systems. And to really get the, the 
human element, you need the contextual data. What's in an email, the content, the attachments, uh, transcribed voice, um, instant messaging, whether it's Link, Bloomberg, um, Reuters, um, all of those can be ingested and, and have the analytics applied to it. And the enrichment data as well from HR system and third party systems. And on the sort of maturity model, if you don't get that, you're only getting half the picture. And as we all know, half the picture is, is of little value without that communications data. So that's what we do. We pull in the email, the chat, the voice, the SMS messages, the phone records, the physical access control, the HR data, um, the, the digital data, the network, the endpoint, the IAM data, apply models to it, score it, um, and analytically analyze it and surface the people of concern um, to allow an analyst to then look at, and there's probably people going, wow, that's quite big brothery. It is. Um, unfortunately, statistically, there are always bad apples in the barrel. Um, and that's what we do is surface the bad apples or those that look to be, provide the context around that um, and deliver the ability to flip into a forensic e-discovery platform to validate whether that's true or not. I won't talk too much about these use cases, you know what they are. Flight risk is a great one for a lot of our customers. We're able to identify people who are about to leave the business before they leave. Why? Because that's when they take the IP. Um, and you can focus uh, a little bit more, more uh, um, energy on looking at those people. And we support the security ops and, and, and the teams within the business as well. So it is taking what people are doing with data, devices, applications, and illuminate it by putting that contextual data around it as well. And here's an example with um, one of our customers where <coughs> effectively we provide a stack rank list of individuals within the organization with the context around why we floated them. Um, they're able to then deep dive into, okay, is this real or not? Um, Peter Heim's totally busted, he's stealing all the information. Um, and one of the key things is to build a proper program around this. You're not looking for the technology to fire people. You're looking at people, uh, technology to help you identify people of concern um, and then validate that before you make any decisions. So you need to build a, a proper insider threat program around that. And this is really, you know, dashboard wise, what it looks like. You know, we're highlighting Phil Zamudio. Um, why? Because, you know, he's doing data recon and collection, he's doing data exfiltration, um, and he's got um, negative sentiment in there. So, you know, sentiment is another great thing in, within the, the application as well, because when you have that contextual data, you can actually work out, is this person happy, sad, angry, irritated? Uh, and when you apply that to the other elements within the, 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 the platform, you can really find out what's going on. This is where some of the HR people get excited because more businesses are concerned about what's happening in their business and what the general feeling of the staff are. Brief case study, investment firm, we were pulling in email, chat and HR data. Um, we managed to surface things like you know, a, an employee being blackmailed for IP, uh, wall crossing, which in an investment banking or investment is not good because you're talking to people and sharing information you shouldn't be sharing. Um, we had people exfiltrating data, uh, stealing algos. It was illuminating to say the least. So the key differentiators, you know, we, we cover the broadest data set. The e-coms and the unstructured data is the hardest piece. We'll integrate with the SIM, SIEM and the tools and infrastructure that organizations have already invested in. Um, and we'll move people to a proactive rather than reactive forensics uh, perspective. And we, and we expose the underlying analytics um, so you can build your own use cases. It's not black box, very configurable. Summary, that's it. You know, the people at the moment, 60% of the breach is related to insiders. <coughs> Excuse me. That's only going to get bigger and worse. Um, data privacy wise, Clearly, there are requirements, that, just for clarity, the, the, uh, the solution can go on-premise, private cloud, uh, and in fact, on an appliance. So the data that you've got is already there. You're just making better use of it. Thank you very much. I got recorded.